If you are looking for the best of the best when it comes to broadcast microphones, well, you may have come to the right video. This is the Neumann BCM 104. But is it worth it over the other industry standard broadcast microphones? Well, let's find out. If you're wondering what a bloody broadcast mic is, well, I do have a handy dandy video right up here that you might want to check out. And in case you don't want to watch that, well, the term broadcast is a bit of a misnomer as it isn't a specific type of microphone. It's more of a subcategory of mics. Now, if you're still confused, well, as I said, watch the video. What I will have to say about it though, is that there are very few mic companies that have the right to be able to slap the name broadcasting on a microphone. And for the record, Neumann's one of those companies. This is much like every other Neumann mic built like a tank. It's full metal construction. And when I say solid, I mean it down to the grill. This thing isn't denting easily. Considering that I borrowed this mic from a friend, well, we're not going to be testing that today. It is the classic hang down style that has become rather synonymous with broadcast, perhaps not as much as the RA20 or the SM7B as of late, but it is gaining quite a bit of momentum. Now, the BCM-104 was originally released in the early 2000s. and came with a dynamic cousin, the BCM-705, the first of its kind for Neumann. Identical in build, but the 705 comes with a green logo and strip along the top. But outside of that, the mics are not going to sound alike, and honestly, they don't cost the same either. The BCM705 is almost half the cost. Uh, the 705 is also a hypercardioid as well, which compared to the BCM104, gives it much less pickup from the sides. Honestly, if you have a bunch of mics all packed into a small room, the 705 is probably going to be your best bet, along with some treatment for your walls. But the BCM104 was looking for a bit richer of a sound, something that isn't quite possible with a dynamic. Also, along with those differences, the BCM104 and 705 do share one really cool feature, and that's the ability to remove and replace the grill as well as an internal pop filter that can be removed and cleaned. For multi-use and multi-voice environments, that was a nice addition, and germaphobes were able to get their own grill. And if you had smokers on staff, that was a nice relief for the non-smokers in the crowd. Now, lastly, on build quality, I would have to mention the shock mount. It's a very robust build and unique styling considering, which makes it look like it can swivel, but it's actually secured in place with this metal frame. Of course, it is separated by two sandwiches of rubber on either joint connecting to the actual mic, which actually works great and saves station engineers from constantly replacing those rubber bands on shock mounts. Now, this is a cardioid condenser mic with the usual frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The max SPL is 138 dB or 152 dB with the pad enabled. Signal to noise ratio is 87 dB A weighted. Self noise is super low at 7 dB. It has a low cut filter at 100 hertz and a 14 dB pad that I previously mentioned. By the way, if you're wondering where the hell those things are, well, you actually have to remove the XLR jack and you'll find them on a PCB when you pull it out. Yes, we're going to be coming back to that XLR jack a bit later. Don't you worry. This is the off-axis rejection test of the BCM-104. This is me speaking approximately five inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm speaking approximately five inches off the side of the capsule. And now I'm speaking about five inches off the rear of the capsule. Now for the plosive test of the Neumann BCM-104. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for a handling noise test of the BCM-104. And this is the handling that I know a lot of people do. Now I do have a squeaky boom arm, but this is what a lot of people like to do with this thing. Move it in, move it out. This is the shock mount. Please don't grip your microphones like that. Just leave them alone. Now for the proximity effect test on the Neumann BCM-104. This is me speaking about five inches away from the front of the microphone. Now I'm about one inch away from the front of the microphone. Five inches, one inch. Five inches, one inch. This is a different mic. His name is Radio Mike. Or her name is Radio Mike. Or its name is Radio Mike. 
radio mic looks like a beekeeper. Inside, you can see the little beekeeper's head. And on the outside, there's a cage to get avoid getting stung by bees. So if you like beekeepers, this is your mic. If you don't like bees or you're anaphylactically allergic, you might want to consider something else. Here we have the SM7B up against the Neumann BCM-104. This is one of the most sought after microphones of all time, being the SM7B. And this one is sought after by broadcast people. I guess you can call broadcast people podcasters and uh, uh, studio nerds. Love this mic. The BCM-104 is a relatively new to the scene microphone compared to the SM7B, although the SM7B version is a little newer than the original SM7. Anyways, what do you think of the differences between these two microphones? Of course, I will be boosting this one in post, and this one won't need as much boosting. Keep that in mind. Now we have the BCM-104, the Neumann, up against the ElectroVoice RE20. Two juggernauts for broadcast. This one is the broadcast microphone. In my mind, this is the one that was widely adopted by all radio stations across the world as just a tank and a workhorse and one that sounded great on everyone. And this is the somewhat latter released BCM-104. What do you think of the difference in sound? Now, very different um, kind of builds, very different vibes, very different, a lot of things. Also, remember we were talking about the shock mount up here on the BCM-104. Well, these are those elastics or rubbers that engineers hate to replace. They're, they're annoying. They go, they get eaten up by your oils on your finger. So they have to be replaced every couple of years from people grabbing at the microphone. What do you think? Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the BCM-104 or do you prefer the RE20? Let me know down below. This one's interesting too because I love the RE20 sound of my voice. I also love the BCM-104. Not really much to gripe about here. Uh, the mic looks and sounds fantastic to me and it really does check all of the boxes. There was one problem I did have with it though. When I first unboxed it and plugged it in, it had a horrible hum, which was a short somewhere in the XLR plug. I had to pull out the plug, reseat the plug, and secure it down with the screw nice and tight, and no, I can confirm this wasn't a one-time issue. My friend who lent me this mic ordered a bunch to be installed in a few radio stations, and this was a problem impacting about a third of the mics he ordered. Not sure if this is a mass problem in shipping or someone in quality control took the week off when these came through. Either way, it's enough of an issue for the average end user to send it back for repair or replacement, which isn't the best scenario. However, with the track record of Neumann being all hand-built mics, this is a bit of an anomaly, and I wouldn't consider this as a strike against the record. That said, it was rather disconcerting. I mean, it's a Neumann. It's hard to ignore or dislike. Now, I can say I'm not a massive fan of all of their mics, including the TLM-103, though for nothing other than the fact that I prefer other mics on my voice at that price point. But there really isn't much else to say there. I do prefer the BCM-104 over the 705. Sadly, I don't have it on hand to test. But I also generally default to condensers over dynamics in my preferences, so it shouldn't be too surprising. Now, this mic handles all the frequencies really well, it sounds fantastic, and if it suits your voice, I can honestly say you won't be disappointed with it. And that is the great thing about broadcast microphones. They are usually going to fit a lot of people in a broadcast situation, so there isn't a lot of risk in purchasing it for that. So then, should you buy it? Well, it, I guess if you have the money and you hell-bent on having the top of the food chain for broadcast, then yeah, buy it. But if you don't need it, well, either of the other broadcast mics will do you just fine, and you will have plenty of money left over for other things, like whatever's listed in the description. You know, the affiliate links. Anyways, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Cheers, and I will see you in the next video.